Hi, this is Christine Kaolo, Girl Traveler. So today's video is how to teach a mock class, or aka how to teach English in Asia. Before I went up to teach English in Korea, I got a lot of questions from people saying, Chris, how are you going to teach English in Korea if you don't even know Korean? And I would be like, duh. I'm teaching English, not Korean. It's an immersion class. You just need to know how to teach English in the simplest, most broken down way. So if you've ever had questions about how to teach English in Asia, if you don't know the language, then this might also be helpful for you to watch. Now, if you're interested in applying for jobs, teaching English in South Korea or Japan, then you might eventually come up upon a situation where they ask you to teach a mock class. In my experience, I've only been asked to teach mock classes in situations where I was applying for an English teaching job in a university. That's really the only time I've been asked to do it. Now recently I posted on my Girl Traveler Facebook fan page uh, that I had applied for a job teaching in Japan and this was for a private academy. Um, they asked me to do a mock, a mock class. I had to do two in fact because I made it through the first round of the first day of interviews and the second day they had another test. Uh, it's the only thing you can call it. That was highly unusual because private academies generally don't ask for that. So if you've never taught a class before, just keep in mind that they want someone that they can work with. If this is for a, a private academy, then they probably don't expect they don't expect you to have that much experience at all. They expect you to be malleable enough where they can, you know, work with what you've got, what you're already bringing to the table and your own experiences. What is a mock class? To my experience, there's only two types. One was that you get to prepare in advance for your class or your lesson, and you'll be given anywhere from five to 10 minutes to teach your class. This will be either in front of a panel judging you or in front of a group of fellow interviewees that you're going in with. The other type is the one where they don't let you prepare. Here's a textbook. We want you to teach this subject right here. You've got 10 minutes. Figure out how you're gonna teach it, make your class materials, and go. That's like <sighs> That was the hardest one I've had to do yet. Trial and error sometimes, that's how it goes. So why do they have these mock classes in which you have to perform, teach? It's because they want to know your teaching style, they want to see your personality, uh, how you interact with your students, and how you get them to engage, as well as how you can break down uh, the learning process without using too many words. When you're teaching a foreign language to someone, the more words you use, the more confused your student gets. Um, so. Teaching a foreign language is all about using as few words as possible to get your idea across. Sometimes you'll be teaching your listening class and all of a sudden you'll be like Brr! and you realize you just used too many words. Look out at your students. They all have this glazed over look. I lost them like a hundred words ago. That's the worst feeling in the world. Tools of teaching ESL. Now this is where it gets to be a little fun because you get to be a little creative. Because your students can't always understand English or what you're saying, then you have to make it a little easier for them. You have to be visual. Make it fun. Use pictures, games, skits, songs. These are all things that Asia, Asian countries like using. At least countries like Japan and Korea, they usually tend to like their students to learn in a fun, kind of interactive sort of way. When I go into an ESL class, I have to be exciting, energetic. And that's usually why they want young people is because they believe young people have a lot of energy and you know, will be able to excite the young kids. A big word to, to remember is teacher-tainer. And that is teacher and entertainer together. Teacher-tainer. Entertain while you teach. Animate your eyes when you talk about things. Animate your voice so that it becomes more interesting to listen to and use gestures more like I don't know why do you think that I know these things 
Because Westerners, we all know how boring it is. I mean, I don't know about your university, but I went to a university where the professor was just like, wah, 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 wah. it was boring. I mean, I, some classes I had a hard time staying awake. In. You don't want your students to fall asleep in your class. Not English. For some reason in Asia, they expect English to be a fun class. Another really big thing in teaching in a foreign country is to get your classes speaking more than you. That means like maybe you speak 20 to 30 percent of the class time and you get your students to speak the rest. So how do you get your students to speak more than you? I have three favorite phrases that I like to use. If I'm showing a picture, I will ask, what is this? If no one knows the answer, I will say, this is a boat. Repeat after me, boat. And they'll say boat. One more time, boat. Mimic boat. What is this again? So I usually have, those are my three phrases, is um, what is this? Repeat after me one more time. That way I have them to say the word at least around three times to kind of like get it solid in them. Split your class up into groups or into partners so that they can have a conversation, moments of conversation with each other. So usually I like to have my students split up into partners so that they can practice their speech and their expressions when, when we get to that section of the book. Um, or I like to section them off into games. Usually games help because when they work as teams, they they help each other you know the strong people help the weak people so those are really fun and useful usually i like to start with a five minute warm-up or greeting i like to get them to get their juices flowing i might start saying like hello how are you today class but we'll shout it out i feel great i feel awesome i feel tired i feel stressed if it's a small class or small group of people and we'd be like how are you today how are you today how are you? and i'll go down the line individually and have them each speak to me Within the first five minutes, I'm getting my students to speak. And that's what recruiters and employers like. They want their students to speak more. They want active learning. So lesson plans. How to create a lesson plan. How do you do it? In terms of class times, classes can run anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer into 60 minutes. So what you're going to want to do is with all your activities, you're going to want to list the time that you're going to be using the duration of those activities. Uh, and that just lets the, the recruiter know that you're gonna stay on track. You've got all these different activities that you're gonna employ in your teaching uh, and they're all well-timed. So for me, like I might do five minutes of a greeting and a warmer or a warm-up. And after the greetings, I might go into a game. Have it be kind of about the subject that you're gonna teach. Then I go into objectives and I'll have them guess what they're gonna learn. Next, we go on to learning the vocabulary and the subject matter and practicing. After we practice all our words and our phrases, then I find something that wraps it all up together and delivers it in one package. Meaning, I create a big game or project in which the, the students have to integrate what they've just, just learned. Oh, I just bit my, bit my tongue. So that's kind of like the skeletal breakdown of a lesson plan. Uh, if you go to my website, I'll have some examples. Good luck on your interview in your mock teaching class. If this video was helpful to you, give me a thumbs up or a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the box below. And I'll be, get, I'll be sure to get back to you. Until then, may your travels be safe, smart, and fun.